short time ago, a New York grand jury indicted Nazi Bulazazi for conspiracy to use weapons of mass destruction. Federal agents have been eyeing him as a possible terror cell ringleader of a plan to detonate bombs across New York City commuter trains. Investigators are still hunting, they say, for up to 24 more suspects who may be involved in this ring uh, and may be still trying to follow through on this mission. Investigators are searching for the explosives right now and the components. Richard Schuberl is a former supervisory special agent in the FBI and counterterrorism division. Harvey Kushner is a terror, terror analyst here uh, in New York. Good to have both of you here. Harvey, we were talking about this in the break. You say that, that the FBI, because one of the other sidebar stories here uh, is that uh, an investigator on this case in the, in the New York Department was moved aside. What's going on between the FBI and the New York City Police Department and the detectives there, and how could they possibly have blown this? Martha, it's eight years after the anniversary of 9-11, right. and we still don't have complete seamless transfer of information or cooperation. We have a joint terrorism task force that talks to each other on a daily basis. But information is power. Things are kept secret and close to the vest. We need to have one agency that supervises an investigation like this. We shouldn't be talking about this now. This is something that they should, both agencies should have been looking at jointly without the public. Did they need the public to help and, and make this case better? I don't think so. I think this is now trying to cover one's butt because information... So you think the rest of these guys are gone? Will they ever be tracked down? I mean, so I've well, heard they're I mean, already questioning some other people. If, if, they, if they were involved with this guy, wouldn't you think they'd be scattering by this time? They yeah, sure would. Uh, Richard, let me talk a little bit about this weapons of mass destruction charge because up until a couple of hours ago all they had so far was lying to federal investigators for Zazi. Now they've got him on a conspiracy of weapons of mass destruction charge. We're learning a lot about very urgent back and forth communications that he made. That last trip to New York according to the indictment they believe was to find the final components of a bomb that he needed but as I understand it all they've got so far is hydrogen peroxide and acetone which you could basically pick up at the local drugstore. Precisely and that's what's scary is the fact that um, authorities at this point have not been able to locate uh, the peroxide or the large storage uh, facility that they may be using uh, that might be holding all this. I mean, initially the FBI went after him to question him because theoretically they felt a plot was in imminent and it was going to happen. So that's why they went after him first with the uh, 1001 charge of lying to federal authorities and federal agents. That put him back, and they were able to hold him on bond. While doing so, they were able to do some additional searches, go through audio. additional data. All right, well, we just oh, got go your through additional databases. Yeah. All right, we just got your audio back, uh, so that's good news. Uh, Harvey, talk to me a little bit about how how tough, how hard you think this case is to prove, and whether or not they're going to be able to get any useful information out of Zazi that might lead them to anything else out there that might still be in the works. Well, Rich, this is something very interesting. You said that something was about to happen. Uh, that's not what I'm hearing. Uh, I think the case was not fully along, and, and, and so they didn't have all their pieces together. They didn't have all the evidence collected, and so now they're going to look for places where they store things. I mean, this is a big country. There, there's a lot of networking here between individuals who would do us harm, and, and, and they're all pulled back at this point in time. This is dangerous that we're talking about this. What, what are they asking? The public to help? Do they have any information that would lead to uh, an arrest of other individuals involved? So I think what Richard was referring, what you're referring to, Richard, was the fact that it sounded like he was getting close to putting together this bomb, right? Exactly. We're talking about an individual when they found backpacks, they found research on the Internet on how to make explosives with peroxide base. You're talking about an individual who had hand-sketched bomb-making materials in his, or hand-sketches of bombs in his car. Right. I mean, when you start putting all these pieces together, it gets a little bit scary knowing that somebody has already come to the conclusion that they're plotting to do something here. And, and all the pieces you, are lining also up. also this quote, this text message, if it turns out to be true, that, that he said the wedding cake is ready. And that the communications between him and his, his New York uh, cohort were getting very <coughs> frantic and heated. And that he needed a, another, you know, component to this bomb. You, and that's why he came to New York. I understand this, this sounds threatening. But, you know, today there's so much out on the Internet that anybody, I could go now and Google stuff and find out about how to put together a bomb. I could have a rucksack. I, I could have Handwritten instructions in his handwriting is what's in it. You, you could have that as well. I, I just think now everybody's trying to cover up for an investigation that went bad because somebody on either side gave it up. So you think now they want to nail on something or else they've got nothing. You better believe it. Yeah. All right, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, there's a look at the three uh, co-conspirators, according to the government. We're going to see how well this case goes. Harvey Kushner uh, and Richard Schoberl, thank you very much, gentlemen.